everybody. My name is Shauna, and this is the American English Podcast. My goal here is to teach you the English spoken in the United States through common expressions, pronunciation tips, and interesting cultural snippets or stories. I hope to keep this fun, useful, and interesting. Let's do it. Hi, everyone. Welcome back. This is episode 173. And as usual with expression episodes, it has two parts. In part one, in this episode, you'll hear a joke, learn the English expression to cry one's eyes out, and you'll practice your pronunciation. In part two of this episode, which will be posted next week, we'll talk about the Cherokees and the Trail of Tears. The Cherokee Nation is one of the largest Native American tribes in the United States, and their culture and traditions are fascinating. Early European settlers actually learned a lot from them, as we learned in last week's episode about Southern food. Would grits, cornbread, and pulled pork be a part of Southern cuisine if it weren't for Native Americans? I don't think so. Anyway, in part two, We'll learn all about Cherokee culture from their traditions and beliefs to how their society functions. Then, at the end, you'll hear a very disturbing tale called The Trail of Tears, which was a forced relocation of the Cherokee Nation and other Native American tribes in the 1830s. It's a dark part of U.S. history, but an important one, so stay tuned for next week's episode. Before we begin, I want to thank all of you for supporting this podcast. First of all, I love when you leave reviews. I see them. I love all of you who have supported me by buying me coffee recently. Vladimir Gonzalez, Sarah P. from Germany, Silvio Passos from Brazil, Aung, Sanja. Honestly, we've been renovating our house and it's been so nice to work from a coffee shop. I think of all of you and your nice messages when I'm there drinking that coffee. Thank you. Thank you so much. If you would like to support this podcast in future episodes, reviews and coffee are a very sweet way to do it. You can also show your support by signing up to premium content, and you'll also get to learn more with each new episode. You can find the links to premium content in the episode notes or on the website at AmericanEnglishPodcast.com. Thank you to everyone for your support. Without further ado, let's begin today's episode. And as usual, with the expression episodes, We'll start with a joke. Are you ready? Why did the pencil cry? Do you know? Because it was feeling a little pointless. (laughs) Do you get it? This joke plays on the double meaning of the word pointless. We've got the literal meaning. In the context of a pencil, pointless means that the pencil has lost its sharpened tip. A pencil without a point can no longer be used effectively for writing or drawing. So, yeah, it's literally pointless. The figurative meaning means something lacks purpose or meaning. When someone feels pointless, they might feel useless or insignificant. So, the humor comes from combining these two meanings. The pencil is crying because it feels both literally out of a writing point and figuratively feeling like it has no purpose. Let's hear the joke one more time. Why did the pencil cry? Because it was feeling a little pointless. (laughs) Oh, man. Don't you love inanimate objects having feelings? Let's move on to the expression of the day, which is to cry one's eyes out. I bet a lot of you can imagine what this means because you know what to cry means. Well, the phrase to cry one's eyes out 
is an idiomatic expression that means to cry intensely or uncontrollably, often due to extreme sadness or emotional distress. It's synonymous with to sob, to bawl, or to weep, which are verbs we use to describe heavy crying. Its origins aren't tied to a specific historical event, but it comes from the exaggerated imagery of crying so hard that one could lose their eyes. Now, to cry one's eyes out is hyperbolic. It uses exaggeration for emphasis or effect. Now, we love hyperboles in English. You might hear native speakers use them a lot with body parts. Did you see Celine Dion at the Olympics? She sang her heart out. In other words, she sang intensely with heart and soul. She sang her heart out. Have you seen Michael Jackson's old music videos? Oh man, he danced his feet off. Once again, he danced intensely with a lot of emotion. He danced his feet off. Have you ever seen the comedian John Mulaney? My uncle recently told me to watch him, and he said that I'll laugh my head off. I'll laugh my head off. I'll laugh so hard my head will fall off. <laughs> um, I haven't seen John Mulaney, but I will have to because apparently he's very, very funny. Now, once again, these are hyperboles. We're not actually losing body parts. We're not losing our hearts or dancing our feet off or losing our heads. <laughs> We're just doing whatever it is intensely. And of course, we also don't cry our eyes out literally. It's an expression. Let's dive deeper into crying our eyes out by going through three examples. Example number one. So last week, Lucas went to Brazil for a wedding, and it was for a couple that has been together for 15 years. The bride, who's my friend Davina, always dreamt of having a big fancy wedding, but it was never the right time. First, she and my friend Samuel had kids, then they got a house, then they traveled the world together. So basically, they collected memories, they lived life, they just never had a wedding. When it was their big day, it was a very big deal. Lucas said that throughout the evening, everyone was crying their eyes out. When their daughter, who's almost a teenager, brought them their rings, everyone was bawling. Everyone was weeping. Tears were pouring down their faces. When Davina was walking down the aisle, Samuel grabbed the microphone and sang a song he wrote about her. Not any old song, a song that essentially changed their lives because it was a massive hit on the radio in Brazil called Logo Eu. But it was, of course, about Davina. Anyway, the audience cried their eyes out again. They bawled. They cried dramatically and uncontrollably. I wish I had been there. Do you cry your eyes out at big events like weddings and graduations? I do. Sometimes I'm a wreck. There are many other reasons you might cry your eyes out. Some might be happy tears, others not so happy. Which brings me to number two. When I was a kid, we got a little orange cat. And I named him Elvis, like Elvis Presley. <laughs> And he was so playful. He would chase after a feather for hours. Sometimes he'd see something. I don't know what. <laughs> something I clearly didn't see. But he would go darting across the floor 100 miles an hour to catch it. What was so great about Elvis was that after he was done being crazy, he'd curl up into a little ball and then cuddle on your lap. Playful, sweet, and cuddly. I loved that cat. Then one day, he disappeared. And my dad, my brother, and I went walking up and down the streets looking for him. Elvis, Elvis, come back home. He was nowhere, it seemed. 
until my dad found him. I'll spare you the details, but it was my first experience with loss and I sobbed. I bawled. I cried intensely and uncontrollably. I cried my eyes out. There are a lot of Elvis impersonators in the world, but no little orange kitty can ever replace my Elvis. Wow, this episode is getting kind of emotional. Happy tears, sad tears. For a last example, I could talk about breaking up with a partner, failing an important exam, receiving bad news. But let's end on a lighter note. Have you ever cried your eyes out during a movie? We all have, haven't we? Now, don't lie. There's no shame in crying during The Lion King. We all did it. But there's another movie during which I remember crying a lot. The Notebook. The Notebook, um, which was a film adaptation of the book The Notebook by Nicholas Sparks, came out in 2004. And I was about 15 years old at the time. And my mom and I went to the movie theaters to watch it. Now, to make a long story short, it's a romance. And in my opinion, it was kind of magical. The acting, the storyline, the picturesque setting, which I later learned was filmed in Charleston, South Carolina. Ryan Gosling. The point is, I was completely absorbed in the romantic story there. And I won't spoil it for you if you haven't seen it, but let's just say at one point the whole theater was crying. You could hear sniffling in the audience, (laughs) hiccuping. (gasps) You could hear people blowing their noses. The audience was crying their eyes out. When we walked out of the theater, my mom and I spotted my friend's dad, Randy. His eyes were puffy and red. It was clear he had cried his eyes out too, which was hilarious because he was one of those tough guys that don't like to show emotions. He was a firefighter. (laughs) Anyway, I still think it's pretty funny thinking about it. See, it's okay for guys to have emotions. It's just kind of funny when they pretend they don't and then they do. When was the last time you cried during a movie? Think about it. Maybe even use it as a conversation starter at dinner tonight. Let's do the pronunciation exercise now. We'll start with the statement, my daughters cried their eyes out when I told them they couldn't watch a show. It's a long one. Repeat after me. My daughters. My daughters cried their eyes out. My daughters cried their eyes out when I told them. My daughters cried their eyes out when I told them they couldn't watch a show. In the conjugation, I cried my eyes out. You cried your eyes out. She cried her eyes out. He cried his eyes out. It cried its eyes out. We cried our eyes out. They cried their eyes out. Did you notice anything peculiar in these sentences? Did you notice by chance how the D next to the Y sounded like a J? -j? You cried your eyes out. You cried your eyes out. Cried your. Cried your. Cried your turns to cried your. I could also say you cried your eyes out, but I want you to know that both options are equally common in American English. Have you noticed this reduction before? It typically happens when a D ends one word and a Y begins the next. It's probably most obvious when the words did, would, could, and should are followed by you or your in questions. Did you see the movie The Notebook? 
Could you get me a tissue? Should you wear your uniform to school today? Would you like to go to the movies? Notice in all of these, it sounded like, did you? Could you? Should you? Would you? (laughs) Yeah, you get the point. Repeat after me. What would you do? What would you do? Let's do a few more examples. Repeat after me. What would you do if you had a million dollars? I could also say, what would you do if you had a million dollars? But it's also common to say, what would you do? Repeat after me. Where would you go if you had the day off work? Once again, I could say, where would you go if you had the day off work? Just pay attention to that J creation with D-Y together. It's very common in American English. I hope you enjoyed this episode. Remember, if you would like to get the full transcript so that you can read along with what I'm saying, the listening comprehension quiz, and all the other bonus material for season four, be sure to sign up to premium content. You can find the link in the episode notes or on the website at AmericanEnglishPodcast.com. Have a good one. Bye. Thank you for listening to this episode of the American English Podcast. Remember, it's my goal here to not only help you improve your listening comprehension, but to show you how to speak like someone from the States. If you want to receive the full transcript for this episode, or you just want to support this podcast, make sure to sign up to premium content on AmericanEnglishPodcast.com. Thanks and hope to see you soon.